Jelton Almeida defeated Rosenstrike very easily. I mean, this was one of the most one-sided main events where literally all Almeida did, shoot one takedown, got him down with that one shot, transitioned slowly, but every transition worked, got its amount, got the back, and choked him out. This kind of reminded me of when John Jones defeated Surreal Gone. I mean, it was that simple. And it just shows that the heavyweight division, even in its current state, it's more well-rounded than ever before, but it still needs a long way to go when it comes to actual getting fighters to understand all disciplines. Rosenstrike's been in the UFC for a while now, and for him not to be able to defend anything when it came to grappling against one of the better grapplers of the division was mind-boggling. He didn't understand how to do anything on the ground. He kept looking at his corner on what to do, even when he was only in half guard. He did look like a fish out of water, and Almeida just took complete advantage of the stylistic matchup but I do have to say that Almeida actually set up the takedown pretty well he was on the back foot which is usually making a takedown more obvious for the guy that's pushing them back but even on the back foot Almeida who was 30 pounds lighter by the way so it makes it much more impressive how easily he made that look when he was going to shoot the double leg, he actually faked up top like he was going to throw a left hook. This threw off Rosenstrike's understanding of what Almeida was doing. Because Almeida did throw like one or two strikes before this happened. And notice what Rosenstrike's right hand is when that fake left is coming at him. It's up high to his head. He's ready to block it. But this is only to set up the double leg. This left hook did not even go far enough to land on the head. And with the same motion, Almeida immediately went right into the hips. And Rosenstrike was only defending with his left hand to get that underhook in there while relying on his balance and weight advantage against the grappler. And as you saw, the takedown didn't get Rosenstrike to the ground immediately. In fact, Almeida was pushing forward while on his knees to get the fight to the ground and Rosenstrike was still standing. He actually turned the other direction. Notice how immediately he's pushing Rosenstrike straight backwards and then he turned him into his own right side. This got Rosenstrike to the ground. So the reason why he didn't get the immediate takedown was number one, he kind of jumped through with it. This is something we talk about with Gilbert Burns' takedown against Blaw Muhammad. He didn't have that drive like an American wrestler would have. And number two, Rosa Strike was 30 pounds heavier, which is always going to take an effect when it comes to grappling. But he still got the fight to the ground pretty easily and landed straight into half guard. And that's where we saw Rosa Strike constantly looking at his corner. He didn't know how to get out of it. He didn't know what to do there. He kept pushing on the head instead of actually trying to reestablish the full guard. And this is actually a problem you see with a lot of heavyweights. They're not flexible or athletic enough compared to the lighter guys to get quickly into their full guard. They need many small movements in order to get into certain positions while they're on their back. Now, there were guys like Fabrizio Verdum or Noguera or Fedor and stuff like that, guys who could scramble quickly on the ground. But for the most part, your average heavyweight just doesn't do that. Whereas when you see lightweights or featherweights or even welterweights, they're able to scramble quicker because their lighter body also allows them to do so. When you're 260 pounds, it actually does give a lighter guy like Jel Tomato, who's 230, a bit of an advantage when it comes to scrambling quickly. He may not be as strong as these guys, but Almeida could definitely do things a lot quicker. He's going to be one step ahead of almost every grappler he's going to face as long as he's not outskilled. So Rose Strike constantly was just like pushing on the head, elbow framing on him, and not moving his legs anywhere, not trying to bump, not trying to escape in any direction, and Almeida eventually was able to scoot him up against the fence to now where he was able to, according to his words, show some of his influence from Habib. Habib would do this to opponents, use the fence to trap him up against it so they can land strikes. There's nowhere else for them to go. They're going to be right under Almeida and trapped up against the fence, and it makes it much easier for him to throw strikes, and he actually threw a knee to the body, which is actually pretty creative for a heavyweight like Almeida, brought the knee back and just thrust it right into the body as all Rosa Strike was focusing on was elbow framing the crazy separation. And after a few ground and pound shots to soften up Rosenstrike and get away from that elbow frame, that elbow frame was only stopping Almeida from getting good head position, but once he got that out of the way, he was able to push his head into Rosenstrike's chin, using that as a point of contact, almost like as if he's balancing his own body off of his own head position, and that's when he was able to use the tripod position, stand up on his legs, so his head and his two feet are now points of contact, and it makes it much harder for the opponent to keep the half guard position on them. Almeida is looking to transition out of that and all he'll need is that left knee of his to rise even a little bit out of Rosenstrike's half guard and he's allowing that to happen by also pushing down on Rosenstrike's leg with his right hand there and then to get out of it he just bends his knee inward faces his body to his own right side so he can slide his leg right out of there and once he's out he doesn't face himself perpendicular to the fence he wants to get parallel with the fence taking it away from Rosenstrike to use it to wall walk if Almeida rotated out to his own right direction 
position, he would be facing the fence, right? That would also have the fence on Rosa Strike's back. So Rosa Strike would be able to use it to wall walk. He could land devastating ground and pound shots in that sequence, but instead of doing that, by not giving Rosa Strike a way out of it, Almeida would rotate to his left direction, taking any kind of escape options away from Rosa Strike. This is actually something else Habib would do very well during his career as well. This gives Rosa Strike one option of how to get out of this position. He has to give up his back. Because notice how his right leg is caught onto Almeida's. It's going to be very hard to bring that leg under and reestablish a half guard on the other side. So instead, he gives up his back, and that's where Almeida gets right on top of him. This is another position that you saw very much happen throughout all of Habib's career. Able to get the opponent in this exact position to land ground upon shots, looking for the Dagestani handcuff. Rosa Strike understood this really quickly and immediately got onto his back, giving Almeida a full opening for the full mount. And that's where the panic set in. Almeida was dropping strikes on him and Rosa Strike completely panicked. Just how any fish out of water would do, gives up his back yet again for the rear naked choke and that was it. A single path that Almeida took and it was an easy win for him, man. Amazing performance by Jelton Almeida, and he's going to be in the top 10. He's probably going to be in the top 5 very soon. You got to keep your eyes on this guy because he has enough grappling skill to take advantage against most guys in this weight class. Is he going to become champion to beat John Jones? I'm not going to go that far yet. I mean, he still is pretty young. I don't think he'll ever fight John Jones. I think Jones will retire before that ever happens, but... He could defeat other guys that don't have much grappling who are in the top five. And if any of those guys ever become champion, Almeida definitely has a great shot at becoming the next Brazilian heavyweight champion ever since Fabrício Verdum, which was a long time ago. 